Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Um, casual attire. It's Friday casual to me. <laughs> I'm actually at a friend's place, um, pet sending for the weekend. So, new location and not creative schedule having to walk dogs, feed dogs, feed cats, do my Facebook Live, and do other things. So, got it on time. So, that was good. That was a win right there. Didn't pack my dress shirt for today. Say lovey. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to my broadcast, by the way. If you haven't seen my, my chat before, usually I'm very formal on Fridays, but actually all five days of the week, weekends I do my casual. So I started my weekend early. Anyway, so welcome to episode 715. And the topic today is betrayal and trust. Opposites in love? We'll see. I'm going to talk about that because there's some things people make assumptions about, which is the big, the big ass word. <laughs> that's, not, that's the next door dog. Um, so before I jump into that, let me just myself so you know who I am, why I'm here, and why I'm doing this. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. This is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. And I'll give you the links about where to find that um, at the end, as well as we find it on YouTube for the replays and everything else. And I'm a passion. Let me back up. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion of the divine feminine. I'm also a relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. Whew, got that part out. Being a passionate champion through divine feminine it informs my work with women, informs my message to support women, and also why I've been doing these talks for the last two plus years called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're on the topic of betrayal versus trust, or betrayal and trust, because I don't always think they're opposites. So let me break that one down. Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Thanks for saying hi. Again, Facebook Live, so you might be seeing comments if you're watching somewhere else and wondering who's commenting. So I'm interacting with people, so there. You have to watch me live on Facebook Live to interact. There you go. Um, or on the replay. So betrayal versus trust. Lisa, hi, nice to see you too. Oh, everyone's coming to my broadcast. Thanks for being here. So um, betrayal versus trust. I'm using it in a relationship context, although right now, well, the way things are looking around us in the society we live in, Betrayal and trust are both kind of um, relevant. Yes, indeed, Lynn. It's a, it's a fun topic. Maybe. Definitely timely. So here's the thing. Trust is something we earn, but sometimes trust is given too easily. So I'm going to get right to the chase. Betrayal, a lot of times, is because we think our trust has been violated. However, and this is the big caveat I'm going to drop right at the beginning, we make a lot of assumptions when we have trust with somebody because we think they're going to do certain things without even confirming with them. The number of times I've seen people in a relationship have challenges where what they had said, sorry, what they had assumed about their partner wasn't what was said. So when their partner violated their trust, they felt betrayed. But the thing is, they never actually confirmed with their partner these are things are going to be in place. For example, if they uh, um, a couple of examples I'll get back on. Um, one of the one situation the partner was who likes to go out for drinking all the time but the thing is they didn't agree about that at the beginning and the, the, the partner who was offended who was betrayed thought the partner was gonna, the other partner was going to be I'm avoiding genders when I'm saying partner and partner versus he or she because otherwise they might start presuming stuff but basically the partner was um, concerned because they had a betrayal in the, or I should say, excuse me, they had an, an addiction in their family heritage, like their father was a drunk and was lost his job, also other stuff. So when their partner started, started, started overtly drinking, because it wasn't they stopped, they just hid it very well. When they started overtly drinking, they felt very betrayed because it was bringing back so many wounds from their history. And this is one of the things about this stuff. Oftentimes we assume trust without asking for it, or we assume trust without verifying it. So my feeling, and I want to say this right up front, right, very clearly, is that when it comes to trust with people, don't make assumptions. Be willing to do your research to find out what that person's values are, what their agreements are. In my in a talk a few days ago, I talked about red flags versus green flags, things that like deal breakers versus must-haves in relationship. Some people don't know what their must-haves are. And if you don't know what they are, you make assumptions about what your partner's going to bring. Now you can say, well, it doesn't matter. My partner, I love him unconditionally. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. I call bullshit, to be blunt, because I don't believe any love relationship truly is unconditional. Otherwise, you wouldn't bother being there. Okay, now I'm, a, I'm a being too, uh, maybe too flagrant on that one. Hmm. 
let me back up let me let me re rewind that one a little bit for a second being in relationship is an investment to be with that person there's a focused direction with that person if you're being unconditional it means you can unconditionally love everybody now if you're in a, poly, a polyamorous type focus that could probably work but it still has this thing where you have preferences and it's the preference to be with one person versus another person which means you're not being unconditional anymore that's my belief the conditionality is that you prefer to be with this person than that person which means that you sometimes choose partners that aren't as well let's say they are perfect for you because <laughs> they give you stuff to work on sometimes oftentimes always I have, to, I have to elevate that one to the truth so the thing about it is as human beings we make assumptions about other people. Sometimes they're good assumptions, sometimes they're bad assumptions. But when it comes to the trust, we are often in the place where we don't actually ask for what it is that we're getting trust for. I should say, excuse me, we don't ask for what it is that we want to be able to trust them about. I, I flipped it on myself. So, for example, using the example I used earlier about the drunk and the drunk stuff, if you're in, if these two people are in a relationship. Thank you, Kurt. Hi, Kurt. Good to see you, my friend. It is always conditional and always conditional. Very true, too. So, so thank you for the input. I appreciate that. So the opportunity, I'll do that way, you can have is to be willing to ask your new prospective partner what their views are on certain things or what their agreements are on certain things that you have particular investment in and particular concern about. So going back to the example I mentioned earlier, the person whose father was a was an alcoholic was very triggered by the partner they didn't and frankly it was a mistake on their part they didn't actually say it up front they didn't actually get confirmation from their partner that they were or were not going to be drinking now by the way this could switch something else it could be it could be a, a drug thing it could be a workaholism it does it's still an a, a, an an ism no it's still a <laughs> it's still a dance with something addictive that somebody has and the challenge with the person who had that with their father was, in a lot of ways, what happens, the love was taken away. Because the person who was alcoholic didn't share honest, honest, intimate love with their child. And so the now adult child is starting to feel violated by their partner because their partner's doing what their father did. So if that's something of importance to you, like you're aware of something from your family dynamic where um, your mother cheated on your father or your father was working all the time, or some other thing that bugs you and upsets you and hurts you and you haven't necessarily healed the wound yet, which I'll talk about in a moment, they should be top of mind when you're talking to somebody else you want to get into a relationship because the challenge with this, and this is going to be flipping the script a bit, is that oftentimes you will attract into your life people who will exacerbate and repeat the same pattern that your parents did or one of your parents did when you were younger. I've talked about this many times before because it's a critical part of our personal growth, our evolution, is to resolve and heal our childhood memories of patterns that our parents imprinted in this, imprinted in us. Which means that your adult life, if you haven't resolved those things, if you meet somebody you feel madly love with them, get together with them, it's quite likely they're going to repeat in front of you, to you, the patterns that you watched, witnessed with your parents when you were younger. So the reason why there was an upset in the relationship because the person was drinking is because the partner who drew them in had to draw them in because they hadn't resolved their issue around addiction and love because their father demonstrated my father was loving but was also addicted so i'm giving you a whole other teaching dumped in the middle of that but here's the thing to stay back to the whole thing with um trust versus uh, betrayal is that sometimes the betrayal is in is is inwardly inspired or inwardly leaked as in we betray ourselves i I'm not sure if you're like me, but I've had the experience in past relationships where I was aware that I was in the same sort of relationship I was in previously and was like, I did this again, didn't I? I created the situation or I had the same communication or I did the same thing or said the same thing that ended up the same result I didn't want. That was self-betrayal. And all of us, I believe, have some capacity to betray ourselves. Now, some more overtly than others. And yes, in our current... Um, well, political scene, the Me Too movement, all these other things, there's a lot of stuff about trust and betrayal that hasn't been resolved yet. So this is just a little piece of the puzzle because there's a lot more about it that can, talk, can go into deep, greater depth in another time. But I want to just tip, just dip our toes in the ocean, so to speak, about trust and betrayal because they are 
not all they're not always two sides of the same coin let's put it this way because sometimes trust is assumptive and when trust is assumptive it sets you up for betrayal trust has to be intentionally and consciously given and received so that betrayal is less likely to happen not impossible but less likely to happen and frankly for me it's one of the most um ups not, ups not upsetting I've witnessed it being upsetting for a lot of people because they oftentimes the relationship ends because of betrayal. Whether it is sleeping, or sleeping with somebody else, whether it is quitting them because they couldn't handle their addiction or whatever it was. There are multiple perspectives on betrayal that people will feel violated by. And yes, almost all of those come back to a lack of trust or a misplaced trust or a violated trust. So again, Trust is cornerstone, yes, to betrayal. But sometimes it's almost given by default because it's not been asked consciously. And the trap is you fall into is that you make assumptions about somebody else and then they betray you and you get upset. If you had really got your trust built properly with that person, the betrayal probably wouldn't happen. And if it did happen, you would actually be less upset about it because the truth is with this betrayal is 90% of the time when that happens, we get upset because we didn't see it coming. We get upset because we didn't make it clear that wasn't going to work. So again, conscious, intentional trust giving and receiving is a vital component for a healthy relationship. At the same time, having an absolutely um, self-supportive self-trust so that you don't go away betraying yourself either is a powerful place to be entering into life as a single person or in a relationship. It's a powerful piece of the work that we do when we learn how to handle our trust issues with other people. It doesn't mean we need to be suffering or um, walking on eggshells. We can actually be free to love and be free to receive. But again, framework is important. Trust framework is a key part of this. I think that's all, I'm not sure I think there's anything else I want to share about this. I think that's about it. That might, any, I know, also, I've seen a few people commenting, so thank you for the comments and your, your shares. Um, I haven't seen any questions come up, so I don't have anything I'd respond to at this point. Um, if you do put any questions in, I will respond after I sign off if I don't get to them when I'm live in the broadcast, by the way. I think that's really about it. Hmm, short broadcast today. I think what else is there to share? Betrayal, trust. Ah. Is trust some hi hi Delana Del see is trust something you go in with? Is trust something well um You mean if you're going to date somebody from the beginning and if you want to you go in with trust at the beginning? Um I would say that there's a certain sense of trust because if you go on a date with somebody, you're hoping they're not gonna be an axe murderer. So there is a certain level of trust you have at the beginning. At the same time, well is it, or is it earned? Um, both. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is a. Um, you go in with trust because you hope the person's going to be a nice person if you're going out with them. They earn your trust by demonstrating things that you can rely upon because they can become consistent. And the third piece is you can actually qualify and and can communicate requirements for trust, as I mentioned earlier, because of things that you really are clear about must have in your relationships. Because the thing is. As I mentioned again, the red flag, green flag thing I talked about it yesterday, the day before, is that if you know what it is you don't want, being clear, well, trust life with a big L, Kurt? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Small L can be sometimes challenging, but in the process of being trusting, the process is part of the journey as well. So, yeah, thank you for that. Um, the red flag, green flag piece. If you are clear that in a relationship you must have certain things to work for it to work for you, and must not have other things. Those things should be discussed with your prospective partner within the first few dates once you, if you know you're looking towards a relationship with that person because that then creates more trust because trust isn't a default necessarily. So, you, I have to hit the comment, there you go, okay. So Della, what you say, you see, you see I don't trust till someone proves to me but my friend says you should trust first till they prove you wrong. Oh, that's an interesting, yeah, here's the thing. You can be trusting of everybody, even to trust them to do what they would do, regardless of how good or bad it is. 
You can actually be that trusting to know this person is going to violate your trust. You can do that if you want. I like the idea of being able to trust first they prove you're wrong, but the problem is there's a lot of victimhood in that. Because if you, and that's not saying you shouldn't trust anybody, at the same time, I would build trust with everybody you meet. That's the best way I can put it. So rather than say you don't trust anybody to the, sorry, keep, keep the tripod. Um, saying you don't trust somebody till they prove it to you, well, you can build trust with somebody from the beginning. Different from trusting first until they prove you're wrong. In fact, I don't recommend trusting somebody, trusting first until they prove you're wrong because I mean, you can trust the universe, like Kurt said about trusting life. You can trust life at the same time. Know that life has a lot of flexibility. Lots of life has lots of variables. And life can suck sometimes. So if you're willing to trust all of that, then so be it. But the thing is, when it comes to relationships and communicating with other people, to really learn to trust somebody does take a... Um, well, it's like a dialogue it's always both people and it takes time so trust is earned yes but it's not earned as a thing you have to like prove it to me like I'm not going to trust you until you prove it to me that's not like that it's more about you build rapport you build trust over time and you communicate it as well to accelerate the process if you want to so trust is something ideally that the person's word is worth something so when you do communicate they will say what they intend to do and communicate that they will keep to that agreement then your trust is honoured if they violate it after what they said that's on them because you believe what they said. And that is kind of the way it works. So, I hope it's been a help to you. And thank you for that question. I appreciate that. You gave me something to bite into. <laughs> um, I thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. This is my daily Facebook Live. I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure I don't have to get enough time to get the broadcast out. If you have any questions about this, please put them below and I will sign up, I'll respond to sign up if you do it here on Facebook or on YouTube. I'll give you the links for that. Also, because I'm talking about self-trust and things in this process, you're welcome, Della. Thank you for sharing and asking your questions. Um, my new offering, my group course, my group program, which is a pay-what-you-want format, just so you know, secret, um, is called Coming Home to Yourself. And if you go to barryselby.com forward slash coming home, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, you can check it out if you want to join in. It's a really, it's going to help you really be, build up and fuel your own self-support structures in so many ways you don't even know about yet. Um, having said that, this is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Authors, where my replays live. And then on YouTube, because I also have a YouTube channel called Barry Selby. Please subscribe. I put a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these live in YouTube format. Um, if you want help in the area of love and relationships, please message me. If you have any questions about this particular topic, again, put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, insights, questions, all that stuff is certainly welcome. And again, I'll put a link in the comments, which I just mentioned verbally, to my new course coming home to yourself. I highly recommend it. And there is no bar to entry in terms of tuition. Because some people say, well, I can't afford it. Like, yes, you can. Anyway, check it out. Um, I'll put the link so you can see it. And again, you've got it verbally. If you think it lines up for you, let's, look, let's talk, get you sorted out, get you jumped into the program. And this, as always, I would say is... It starts with trusting yourself. Self-trust is the key. So build that muscle inside because then it becomes easier to discern trust with somebody else. Not always trusting them, but to discern trust with them. Now, I'll leave you with that thought for tonight. Uh, back in tomorrow, same, um, oh, tomorrow's going to be interesting. My broadcast may be early tomorrow because I've got a lot of, I've got three different social engagements all happening early evening tomorrow. It's a busy weekend. Um, but I want to get the broadcast out today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. Tomorrow I'll be live Maybe at 5 p.m. I can't promise that. We'll see. But it'll be sometime tomorrow. So just stay tuned. Watch my wall. And if you're not already getting notified when I go live, there should be a button around here somewhere to let you know to click on so you can watch me next time I go live. So with that, thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow at some point. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.